What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out WWE wrestlers getting real angry, caught on camera by Tap Out Corner. Now, these wrestlers are human beings. They have emotions like me and you. You know what I'm saying? So they go through their highs and they go through their lows, and sometimes you know that pressure or you know whatever they're dealing with, the stress of being on the road or you know doing all these shows multiple times a year, you know not really being at home, trying to entertain us, dealing with injuries, it can all you know get a little frustrating. You may meet that one fan or that one individual that just said something and it just ticks you off, and now as a wrestler you're ready to legitimately body slam them through some type of furniture. So we're going to check out some of the moments where wrestler said, fuck it, it's up and it's stuck. We're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support. Didn't mean to full screen it, but let's get right into it, man. March 30th, 2003 was the day Brock Lesnar nearly died. In his first WrestleMania match, the Beast took on the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. Yep. The two phenomenal athletes had one of the most physical WrestleMania matches of all. That wasn't supposed to happen. I don't know why that popped up. It's, it was updating and it just decided to pop up in the middle of the video. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> all time, but it nearly ended in tragedy. Earlier in the day, Brock Lesnar was told by people backstage they should perform a shooting star press. Mm. Brock had performed this move earlier in his career, but stopped due to how dangerous dangerous it was. Lesnar didn't want to do the shooting star press, but got talked into it. After wrestling with Kurt Angle for 20 minutes, Lesnar got onto the mm -hmm. top rope to perform the high risk move. Uh. It didn't pay off and nearly cost Brock oh his life gosh. as he landed on his head and oh. neck. Somehow, Lesnar was able to get back up and finish the match. Once Brock Lesnar got backstage, he was hurting and getting swarmed by a mob of people. Damn. I was getting warm, I was getting sick, and all these people surrounded me, and I was just going nuts. You know, people were grabbing me and wanted me down the stretcher, and wanted me in the ambulance. Damn, bro. Once again, I'm ready for him to hang it up in WWE, but I gotta, I gotta call a spade a spade. I know Dub is not gonna like this, but this match with Kurt Angle was really good and the dude never killed himself trying to move a, do a move that he wasn't even really comfortable with so kudos to him for trying to do something he wasn't even really comfortable with and just to entertain the fans man i i can i can only respect it you ain't gotta like the guy but you know i can respect it man i wasn't having any of that there's Whoa. a good chance you've seen, or at least heard of, the Montreal Screwjob. Of course, In of short, course. Bret Hart was leaving WWE in 1997 to go work for their competitor, WCW. Bret was the WWE champion at the time, and his last match for the company was at the Survivor Series pay-per-view in Montreal, Quebec. Hart's WWE contract gave him reasonable creative control, and he decided not to lose the championship. The owner of WWE, Vince McMahon, wanted Hart to drop the title, but legally couldn't say no, so he did something different. During Bret Hart's final match, McMahon had the bell run and awarded the championship to Brett's yeah, opponent, infamous. Shawn Michaels. Yeah. This is all planned behind Brett's back, and the hitman was just as shocked as the fans. Of course. Since this happened on live TV, most people have seen this infamous moment, but few have seen what happened backstage. Shawn, you weren't in on that? I've, yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen this clip before. It's just, yeah. <laughs> supposedly he was going to lose it the next night on uh i believe monday night raw that's when he agreed to loot drop it but yeah witness my hands are clean this one i swear to god he's yelling me out there i gave him the belt when i came back here i will not have any part of it wait he got shit he's got it okay let's get out okay close the door let's go. After the cameras left, Bret Hart had a private meeting with Vince McMahon. Bret then shared what happened immediately after. What happened? Somehow Vince uh, ran into my hand, but I drilled him. Damn. Drilled him as hard as I could. Knocked him right out. Damn. Vince McMahon with a punch. I told him to get out. Don't look at the camera, trying to look for him. That's woo. in late 2017. Man, Dean Ambrose that's hey, this is that was an infamous one. That's that's always gonna go down in history. Obviously, things are a little bit different. You know, they somewhat made amends or whatnot. You know, this is you know past them now. But still, when it originally happened, it was like the talk of the wrestling world, like you know what was real what was fake and you know just how you know everybody was really surprised that this happened and it really it really made vince mcmahon 
the character on TV that much more hated, which ultimately worked for him, you know? suffered a triceps injury and was out of action for nine months. Finally, in August 2018, Ambrose was getting ready to make his return. A WWE camera crew was filming the lunatic fringe when he got a phone call informing him plans had changed. No way. No, kidding me. I am feeling good. I happen to be feeling fantastic. Thank you for asking. No, yeah, I'm going to be there. I'm not, because I'm not even out there. Except for, you know, the last eight months, like, where I nearly died. But thanks for calling. No, now, now you call. I'm going to get on a plane and go all the way back to the East Coast on about this much notice. I've been back in the game for, like, 30 seconds, and I'm already getting pissed off. Santino Morella was one of the funniest WWE So I guess they called him back before he was, you know, well, I guess he was cleared to go. And then it's like, hey, we need you here. He's like, hey, bro, you ain't even check on me not once. Like, y'all never, like, hey, hope the recovery's going good. Damn, bro. See, this is what a lot of us don't see what goes on behind the scenes with wrestlers. Even when you're dealing with injuries and then as soon as you get healed up or they feel like you've been healed up or they you notify them, let them know, or they know that you're healed up, they come back, come back right back. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's like, damn, bro, y'all ain't check up on me. Dang, y'all ain't say what's good. I, how you been? Wrestlers of all time, but just like everyone, he can get ticked off. In 2005, Santino was training at WWE's development system, OVW. During a show, Santino was playing a fan in the crowd. He was supposed to act terrified of the boogeyman. Uh, when... The whole him and Jim Cordette having some issues. Ah, okay. Uh, we, we've seen a video on this recently. Instead, laughed. The man in charge, Jim Cornette, became enraged and slapped Morella afterward. Cornette ended up getting fired, and Santino mm -hmm. continued his WWE career. Over a decade later, in yep. 2017, while at a convention, Morella and Cornette bumped into <laughs> each other, and it went as well as you would expect. You remember that slap. After winning the WWE Championship, oh, Eddie Guerrero Jim Cornette just does not get You want it again? Even at that old age. Guerrero made a tear-jerking phone call. To hear it, hit the video on screen. Oh, man. That was uh, that was crazy. You know, we've already seen that, well, uh, you know, snippet of that incident between Santino Morello and Jim Cornette. And I'm going to be honest with you. If somebody slapped me and I don't get a chance to slap them back at no point, especially if... You know, I never got an apology or it never got resolved. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. It just depends on how I'm feeling that day. I may have that same energy. Like when I see you, like what's good? What's good? You know what I'm saying? That may be the energy of that. You know, maybe I'm in a good mood. I let it go. Who knows? But uh, once again, these wrestlers are human beings like you and me. You know what I'm saying? They may be, they may seem like bigger than life stars you know because they're on television and so many people know who they are but they go through emotions and and deal with stuff just like us so you know it's it's understandable and sometimes they can get upset or frustrated so comment down below let me know have y'all ever seen if you guys have ever been in a chance or well, in a situation where you've seen some footage or seen a wrestler at a live show get upset about something let me know if there's ever been an instance you've seen a wrestler it doesn't have to be in a or a wwe or wherever it can be even at an indie show you've seen them visibly like it's not a work not you know or anything like that you've seen them upset to the point where they're furious you know what i'm saying let me know i think the most recent one i can think of if you guys remember when seth Rollins got attacked by that crazed fan he was definitely upset because he was thrown he got i think he ended up getting tackled and then he started laying in the punches he was laying them in because obviously you got blindsided by a fan nah you attack me i'm gonna give you the beat so I'm sure he was legitimately upset about that. So that's one I can remember happening recently. But appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. And I am still here in the speed of YouTube. Wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.